Happy New Year everyone! I hope you had fun during your Christmas break. It's 2021 and now we're back to school for the second quarter. Since it's the new year and as they say, new year is about new beginnings. Why don't we start our lesson with a bucket list? If you have never heard of the term bucket list, it is a list of all the goals you want to achieve, dreams you want to fulfill, and life experiences you wish to experience in your lifetime. The basic meaning of a bucket list is to keep track of your goals and to take steps to achieving these goals in order to maximize the incredible experiences in your life. The most common explanation for the origin is from the phrase, kick the bucket, which is believed to originate sometime in the Middle Ages when execution by hanging was common and the executioner would kick the bucket. You get the idea, right? There is no right or wrong way of designing a bucket list no one specific prescription it is a personal journey between you and your aspirations each one should be different because it is meant to reflect what you most desire in your own life let me show you some examples a good bucket list is balance the important part is to come up with the items that are meaningful to you ones that will inspire you to wake up each morning with a fire in your belly it could be anything you want to achieve with that said, don't worry if you didn't make each aspiration earth-shattering or even travel-related. Sometimes the simplest goals are the most rewarding. So are you ready? Pause this video and think about your own bucket list. How was it? How many items do you have on your list? Don't worry if you feel your bucket list is not yet complete. You may constantly revise it as you go on with your life. Remember that the whole point of creating a bucket list is to maximize every moment of our existence and live our life to the fullest. It's a reminder of all the things we want to achieve in our time on Earth so that instead of spending our time on pointless things, we direct it toward things that matter to us. Now, we don't need to be dying to make a bucket list. Although because of its origin, it's commonly associated with death and some people have strong emotions about the term mostly because it is a reminder of their own mortality. The subject of death creates fear and anxiety to most people, so we don't talk about it often. We tend to sweep the topic of death under the carpet because we feel uncomfortable talking about it. Yet, even if we don't usually talk about it, we know death is inevitable. I think with age, people come to realize that death is a constant possibility, and we need to learn to face it with serenity, wisdom, and resignation such as the poet Alfred Tennyson in his poem, Crossing the Bar. Today, we are going to read this wonderful literary piece. Crossing the Bar by Alfred Lord Tennyson is a popular poem due to his theme of overreaching death. The poem deals with the speaker's concern about his approaching inevitable death. It also highlights his accepting and calm attitude about the end of his life. Lord Tennyson was a poet of the Victorian period and remained the poet laureate of Great Britain and Ireland during his lifetime. He is well celebrated to this day for his short story lyrics. Just a quick background, Crossing the Bar was written in 1889 when the poet was visiting the Isle of Wight and published in the volume entitled Demeter and Other Poems in 1889. He was 80 years old at the time and was down with a severe illness, from which he eventually recovered. The illness, however, made the poet ponder on death as he himself was very old and nearing his time. He uses the metaphor of crossing a sandbar to represent death in this poem. He died three years later and although he wrote a few more poems, he requested that all of his poetry volumes be ended with this poem. Thus, the poem is an important one and can be seen as Alfred Lord Tennyson's choice of his final words. All right, so before we read the poem, let's do some vocabulary words first. Number one, and there may be no morning off the bar. Morning means A, crying, B, shouting, or C, talking. The correct answer is A, crying. Number two, and may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. Embark means A and B, leave or C. Start. The correct answer 
is letter B, live. Number 3. For though from out are born of time and place and born means A, boundary, B, rise, or C, advantage. The correct answer is A, boundary. Now, let's read and talk about the poem. Pause this video so that you can silently read the entire poem. Now, let's discuss the meaning of this poem by stanza. Let's start with the first stanza. Sunset and evening star, and one clear call for me. The poem begins with the speaker describing the atmosphere. He says it is sunset and the evening star can be seen in the sky. It also says here that someone is calling the speaker. It is a clear, unmistakable call. It is the call of death. The speaker believes that his death is close. It is interesting to note here the imagery the poet presents before us at the start of the poem. Sunset and evening star represent the end of the day. Just as the day is about to end, the speaker says that his life is drawing to an end as well. And may there be no moaning of the bar when I put out the sea. Here, the poet uses his famous metaphor of crossing the bar, describing death as an act of passing beyond life. The word bar here means a sandbar. A sandbar is a geographical structure which forms around the mouth of a river or extends by slow deposition of sediments carried by the current over millions of years. The structure forms a kind of barrier between the water inside the river water and outside it, the open sea. The poet uses this sandbar as a symbol of death, with the water inside representing his life and the water beyond representing the afterlife. He wants to put out to sea without the moaning of the bar, meaning the poet wishes his death to be without pain and without mourning, to die quietly and peacefully. Second stanza. But such a tide as moving seems to sleep, too full for sound and foam. Through the poem, the poet Alfred Lord Tennyson compares his impending death to crossing a bar. In this stanza, the speaker of the poem talks about the inevitability of death. The poet wishes that when he puts out to sea, meaning when he dies, let it be like a ride which seems asleep as it moves. So meaning the speaker wants his death to be smooth, like a calm sea wave, which is too full for sound and foam. The speaker hopes that his death will be silent, smooth, and quick, making no fuss, when that which drew from out the boundless deep turns again home. In these lines, the poet uses the example of the river and the sea to express the kind of death he wishes for himself. The water from the sea evaporates and turns into clouds, right? These clouds bring rain entering the water into the river, and these rivers too flow carrying their water and eventually pouring it into the sea. They thus complete a cycle and the water returns from where it came. Just so, the speaker considering himself like the water says that he is returning where he came from. The boundless deep here apparently stands for the sea and in an allegorical sense to the place the poet believes he will go after his death. Here, we should notice that this stanza is a straight continuation of the idea introduced in the first stanza. The last lines of the first stanza together with this one makes up the meaning of the verse. Third stanza, twilight and evening bell, and after that, the dark. In the third stanza, the poet again resorts to describing the atmosphere to convey his inner feelings. It was sunset when the speaker started the poem, right? But now, in this third stanza, it is twilight, meaning the sun has already gone down the horizon and thus is setting. Time has passed by since the speaker began the poem, and time is passing by as he speaks which imbues the lines with a sense of urgency. The evening and the sunset is also symbolic of the old age she is in. He is inching towards the inevitable. The speaker can hear the evening bell toiling. It is the indication that night is approaching. And then after a while, it gets dark. It is night. The poet here uses twilight to show us the state of his life. Just as the day has ended, his life too is about to end. And may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. 
The speaker expresses his hope that there will be no sadness or farewell upon his death. The sadness of farewell is ambiguous and can mean both the speaker's own sadness as he departs from life or the sadness of the people whom he leaves behind and who are saying farewell to him. However, we think the former is more relevant. Again, Lord Tennyson writes when I embark to convey the idea of the speaker's death. Thus, it is evident from the work Embark that death is not seen as a final destination by the poet, but rather as a new beginning. Fourth stanza. For though from out are bored of time and place, the flood may bear me far. In the previous stanza of the poem, we see the speaker's positive attitude towards death. It is seen to be exemplified in this final stanza of the poem. We understand that the speaker has accepted his reality, his death. He appears to have made his peace with the idea of his fast approaching death. He says that he will be beyond the boundaries of time and place, and the flood of death will carry him away. This is going beyond the reach of this world. The speaker suggests that there is a place beyond our time and space where he hopes to go after his death. We are desecrated with the poem's belief in afterlife. I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. These final lines of the poem are shrouded in allusions and hidden meanings. Firstly, we are told that the speaker hopes to see his pilot face to face when he will have crossed the bar. Here, the word pilot is a direct reference to God, and perhaps the reason why the word pilot is capitalized. Lord Tennyson had, of course, his own view when it comes to religion. Since God is considered to drive the world and all living things, we see the pilot reference of the divine word in the poem. Also, the use of the word cross is interesting. While it might simply be a word to suggest crossing the bar, it is speculated that it might be a reference to Christ, as cross is similar in sound to both Christ and cross. If so, then we find another allusion from the poet to religion and afterlife. The poem thus ends on a positive note with the poet both accepting the finality of death and hoping to meet God in the afterlife. Death and acceptance are the major themes of this poem. Throughout the poem, we find many examples which indicate that the poet is talking about the approaching dawn of his life. Although the poem is not morbid or sad, yet it describes the poet's meditation over his death. He suggests that rather than fearing definite death, one should accept that one day everyone is going to cross over from life to death. So if you're going to read the poem, you will notice that there is no sense of regret or disappointment or sadness on the poet's part. He has already accepted his death perhaps because he has fully lived his life. With his gentle rhythm and rich symbolism, Crossing the Bar is a deeply engrossing poem that makes us contemplate the mortal nature of man which will eventually have to cross the bar. Just like me, I hope you have also appreciated this beautiful poem. Now, I do have a challenge for you. Have you ever seen an epitaph? An epitaph is a short statement about a deceased person, often carved on his or her tombstone. An epitaph or gravestone inscription serves many purposes. Translated from the Greek to mean upon a tomb, epitaphs can identify the deceased, summarize an entire life or profession, or express tributes from mourners left behind. Memorable epitaphs can even bring a final smile or tear to those left behind. Often a short and sweet phrase can say everything we need to say about the departed. Here are some examples of epitaphs commonly found in gravestones. Writers like slide to have the last word. So here are some examples of epitaphs coming from literary authors and poets. Challenge is to write an epitaph poem. Write an epitaph of a famous person who is now deceased. It can be a singer, an actor, an athlete, writer, anyone. Okay, someone who has been famous, and preferably someone that you have always admired. 
Now, think of several descriptions that come to mind when you think of this person. Examples are what they stood for, famous songs or movies, what they looked like, or how they died. Using your ideas, write a one stanza poem for the person that you have chosen. You may rhyme and use other literary devices, right? Creativity is highly encouraged. I know it's kind of weird to be talking about that, especially that we just entered this year. If there's anything that we can take away from reading this poem, is that life is not guaranteed. At the end of the day, what matters most is how much you love, how gently you lived, and how gracefully you let go of things not meant for you. Thank you so much for watching.